All right, go ahead. Hey, Scott, I'll turn right over to you to start us on the workshop for the uh, legislative agendas. You're muted, Scott. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Tonight's workshop is uh, February 9th, 2021 City Council uh, workshop on the legislative priorities for River Falls. Um, the presentation was assembled by um, the assistant to the city administrator, uh, Brand Johnson, and he's available to kind of co um, co present today. We, I don't recall, I guess we could look, look it up. I think we started um, probably in 2018 or 19 with um, asking the council to meet once a, once a year to talk about the legislative priorities, given the state's biennial budget process, um, every other year is of, of most interest if we're making funding requests or looking for legislative changes, they they're more tend to be more active in the budget years. Um, so tonight we're gonna go through a background in history uh, provide information on our state representatives and federal representatives, talk about why we would establish priorities and then uh, talk about the draft legislative uh, priorities, which then are uh, can be discussed by the council and then they will be put on a future, um, then they would be a resolution passed um, at a council, a regular council meeting to, to approve them. And then, so let's go to, we're gonna pull up the slideshow, Brant, if you'd like to do that. Yep, I can do that. So can everyone see it? Good. Yep, it's perfect. Okay. So you can skip the th slide three there, Brant. So legislature uh, convened on January 4th for the start of their legislative session. That's when they swear in the new um, legislators and kind of get started. The state works on, um, and I'm, you know, don't intend to be a history professor necessarily. So, I, you know, I'll, I'll be talking broad generalizations about the state legislature tonight, um, but they, they will run generally from January through May, at least that's the intention of what is uh, theoretically a citizen legislature. So not there, Wisconsin is not considered a full-time legislative body. Um, it's part-time much like the city council operates where um, they have other, other gainful employment typically. And so they come into session just to get their business done and then essentially go home. Um, the There's kind of one to two weeks a month where they call floor periods or in session, you might hear people say, um, and that's set up by the leaders in each of the, the legislative branch, or not branches, each of the legislative houses, um, the Senate and the assembly in the case of Wisconsin legislature. And so, They've kind of got a schedule set up. Um, Brian, you want to skip to the slide four or go to slide four? So, um, any bill that appropriates money or provides for revenue or relates to taxation is referred to the Joint Committee on Finance. That is viewed typically as the most powerful group subgroup of legislature legislators um, it's based on which party controls each of the house or on the assembly and the senate in this case the senate and the assembly both are majority republicans so therefore 12 of the committee members are republicans and four are democrats there's two uh, two democratic senators and two democratic assembly persons and then um, I believe it's six of each um, for assembly and Senate for Republicans. We'll get to that later. I think there's a slide later here that that's exactly who's on this committee. 
the executive budget is introduced by um, and referred introduced by the governor and then referred to the joint committee. So in Wisconsin, the governor kind of puts the budget together and and then presents it to the joint committee and finance. Then they work through it and then it's sent to assembly committee and Senate committee. So if you want to go back one slide, it's it's kind of like um, the the bill becomes a law one brand. Okay, sorry. So I mean you've all seen this those of you who grew up on Schoolhouse Rock have kind of seen the I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill. I Wisconsin is very similar, but it's a little nuanced with the Joint Finance Committee. Um, but there is in our presentation, we'll, and then we'll make this available on the, on the website too. There, there is a little bit of difference in Wisconsin. Essentially, the Joint Finance Committee and the governor haggle a bit, um, and then the governor has a pretty strong veto in Wisconsin, one of the, the strongest in in the country, and so. There's a bunch of other things we're not covering tonight, which is like bill language drafting where they're they're trying to make sure the governor can't change words and sentences to make new new meanings, but we won't we won't get too much into that, but there's lots of case law related to that in Wisconsin specifically for the governor's veto. But essentially you need to get the governor and the joint finance committee to agree on something if you want them to give you money for it. Um so we can go to the next slide. Um, next slide there, Brant. And then this is the Joint Committee on Finance. So these are important folks in the legislature as it relates to spending. Um, we happen to have Representative Zimmerman from um, our assembly representative is on the Joint Finance. This would be his second um, consecutive term on that committee. Um, I would note that Senator um, Bernier out of Chippewa Falls, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, um, is also on the committee. So kind of our, in our neighborhood, um, we have two um, folks to work with potentially. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Our U.S. representatives, or I'm sorry, state delegation. Uh, the, their committee assignments, and then we'll go to the federal delegation for representatives. Um, River Falls is uniquely, I'm not sure how many communities of 15,000 have two U.S. representatives. Um, there probably is others like us, but I'm not sure. The list has definitely got to be small. So. Uh, a portion of the city of River Falls is covered by um, the seventh and the, the majority is in the third. Um, and there's their committee assignments. Um, and you can go back one rant to the committee the, to the so in this case, the um, I don't know that. Representative Tiffany has been given any chairmanships. I, I don't suspect he has given that he's a junior member of, of the Congress, but the Republicans have a majority in, um, let's see, I'm not, they do not. Um, majority in the House right now, Brandt. Uh, Democrats. Democrats, so I'm not sure, and you didn't, in your research, you didn't find out any chairmanships for Congressman Kind, did you? No, they didn't, didn't have any. Okay. And then we'll go on to uh, Senator. And so there's a joint, some kind of joint rules resolution right now for control or appointment of committees. And I, I admit I have not researched that significantly, but um, I understand the committees are going to be all be chaired by Democrats, if I if I understood that right, correct, Brant? Yes, it is. Um, and here again, I'm not sure we've learned of any chairmanships, chairpersonships um, yet for Senator Baldwin. Although she generally could be in line for some special things if they're if they come up, mm -hmm. but she, she's probably not senior on any of the committees. 
No. Um, okay, and then, and we're going to go through this pretty quickly. I'm sorry, I just want to get to the local local legislative priorities, but I wanted to do that. So, purpose of the legislative priorities is so that we speak with one voice. I'm kind of working from the bottom. It it helps the staff understand the priorities of the council. And when I say council, I mean the council as a whole. Certainly each individual council member is free to have their, their legislative priorities. There's nothing that prevents a council person or the mayor, in particular the mayor, from speaking directly to legislators and telling them what you think is important and what they should or shouldn't do um, as it relates to impacts on the city. We do want to, with some, some efficiency though, try to help the legislators understand where there's consensus by the council as a whole um, on things that we think will improve the lives of people in River Falls um, as it relates to what they can influence, um, particularly things that impact the operations of local government. So that's typically where the, the um, River Falls City Council is focused, although you certainly have the ability to, to go wider and farther than that if you, if the, you want to choose to support measures that, that talk about global policy or other things, councils have the ability to do that, but typically we have not. Um, it does allow, I don't have to register, um, and I don't believe Brant does, um, but certainly a person that is considered a city official in Wisconsin is not subject to registering as a lobbyist. We're able to speak on behalf of the city and we can do that even if the council doesn't provide, you know, direction. We just think it makes sense that if we're going to speak on behalf of the city, that the council has provided us that direction about what they want us to proactively engage with the legislators on. Um, larger cities in Wisconsin have been doing this for a long time. They have a list every year, and they go and they and many of them even have lobbyists. So I know Madison, Milwaukee, have historically had. Um, staff lobbyists that specifically their goal is to go to both uh, DC and Madison to lobby for things of interest. Uh, River Falls is not either employed lobbyists or um, or hired that I'm that I can recall hired uh, lobbying firms on specific issues. I'm going to go to the next slide, Brant. So we use we use these as a guide when we're talking with them. Um, it's it is important to the legislators that we are speaking with a voice. So they they do. It does help us get some traction when um, we can say, "Here's the resolution passed by the council. Here's the the legislative priorities." Again, it's it's very powerful when the mayor does that too. I mean, the mayor can kind of be our spokesperson. And the legislators certainly listen. Um, it, it is, in particular, the federal representatives, mayors have a kind of heightened voice um, historically. But we do like to, to give the city council a chance to, to kind of weigh in. You know, the next slide, Brant. Um, so let's go through our draft policies pretty rapidly. Um, if you have questions as to, to what we're specifically talking about, um, we can elaborate. Otherwise, if if the council will allow, we'll run through these pretty quickly and the category, categories, and then we can have some discussion about what, what direction the council like provides staff. So we have one category called legislative policy. Um, these are somewhat big picture legislative policies. So they may not have a particular bill attached to them at this point, but it's something that the council has said, we should focus our efforts into trying to get some headway, meaning something, some progress in particular, legislative improvements to the emergency detention process, whereby the city of River Falls and other law enforcement agencies in the state and health systems are currently transporting um, nearly 100% of all emergency detentions that require such help um, to Winnebago and Oshkosh. Um, there's obviously uh, um, concerns about logistics and taking people away from their families and a number of other things. Um, 
and Chief Young has been appointed to the task force on that. Uh, there's currently legislation um, to be proposed to put uh, money and resources of the state into getting beds um, created in Eau Claire. And so that's the legislative policy priority for the city. And then the city has historically wanted to emphasize that we think we should get a bigger share of gas tax money, that local roads are important, and that gas tax money for local roads is something that we should think about um, trying to increase. Next slide there, Brian. Um, then there's things that we consider more technical in nature where they may be, they actually need a bill probably drafted if they haven't already been drafted specifically. Um, this is something Brant would work with staff of the legislators to try to, to either find an old bill that, that meets the purpose or draft a specific um, technical change in the either the, um, uh, a bill, a state statute type modification, or in some cases an administrative code. So Department of Revenue, Department of Administration, Department of Transportation, Department of Natural Resources all have administrative codes that they operate under the, that provide clarity of the statutes. Sometimes there's something we'd like to get clarified. So um, briefly, um, three technical clarifications that we're looking for in this um, that would be related primarily to statutory language um, is they did, there was a bill last year that was passed for to allow cities like River Falls to do multi-year biennial budgeting. Unfortunately, the legislature said it would be levies in even number of years, which is opposite of what River Falls does. In River Falls, we do it um, in years where there's a new incoming mayor, the thought being that a new incoming mayor should have influence on a two year budget um, for the city. And so we're able to still do it under our home rule, po home rule powers, although it requires us to, to levy separately each year um, in order to do that. This bill actually allows cities that do it in even number of years to, to levy for two years, two consecutive years. Um, and then allow for financing of 10 plus years. Right now, state legislature in most cases requires um, a referendum for financing issues greater than 10, 10 years, so 11 year plus basically. Um, we think it makes sense fiscally that uh, cities be able to borrow according to the asset life. Um, so either 15 or 20 year bonding for some, some things like wastewater plants or city halls where right now, most cities rely on a 10 year financing, then they refinance that and say year seven for another 10 years. So they end up with a 17 year issue, um, but there's a lot more cost and trouble involved with that. And then lastly on the technical changes, kind of big sweeping ones that we talked about was allow sharing um, between tax increment districts that are in different counties. So there's about seven or eight of us communities in Wisconsin that have two different counties. Um, in the case of Appleton, I think they have three. Um, but right now you can share between tax increment districts, but only if they have the identical underlying taxing jurisdictions. So that excludes us sharing increment from say Sterling Ponds with a downtown TID. Um, there may be, there may be um, reasons to do so. Um, we're we're proposing, and this has been proposed in the past in the legislature, that if both all the underlying taxing jurisdictions, so in that, that case, both counties would have to agree, it allows some sharing back and forth between TIDs. Fortunately, we haven't had any TIDs that have been in real trouble where we've needed to do it to kind of save a TID, but um, that was the original purpose of the sharing um, in statutes. Scott, could I ask a quick question about that? Yes. <clears throat> so, and I and I support that sharing, uh, not restricted to counties, but doesn't doesn't the TID have to be? I'm uh, getting this confused now. What what's the half mile rule? Spending outside the existing TID. 
Yeah, half mile rule, it relates to the ability to spend outside of the boundary of the TID. Um, and right now, I would need to, I would want to check um, because we didn't, we're not asking necessarily to allow the half mile boundary to overlap counties, which I think right now we typically can't go, we can go a half mile, but not into a different county um, by, by right. So this is just related to sharing. An example would be say, Whitetail Ridge is, is winding down and it has 250,000 a year in increment that it's, it's netting. Right now we could share that with a new TID like Man Valley or something if the Joint Review Board agreed and if the City Council agreed. It takes two, two bodies to agree. But you could, even if the Joint Review Board and the City Council agreed that it makes sense to share, say, some of Whitetail's increment with um, a, a down, one of the downtown TIDs or create a new downtown TID and share to kind of kick one off, you, you're prohibited by, by current law to do that. Yeah, because we shared with the original River Falls Industrial Park to Whitetail. I remember we cascaded that into Whitetail, and I think Whitetail actually helped contribute to Sterling Ponds, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. But the TIDs don't have to be within a half mile of each other. That's a different, that's a different issue. Correct. Yep, we, we, have, we have shared f TID 4, which is Whitetail, to TID 5, which was Sterling. Let's see. Tid four, which I believe was um, Whitetail to might have been Tid ten at that point, Sterling Ponds. Correct. And again, you had to get the city council and the joint review board had to agree to that. You can't just do it. A staff doesn't. It has to go through the public public process to do that. You have to demonstrate a uh, positive, you know, benefit for the community to do that. Okay, and then one state agency change, um, I think it's on the next slide, is in the Wisconsin Administrative Code or agency language, I guess is probably the best clarification, is the DNR Clean Water Fund does not allow regionalization grant money to go to our regional biosolids facility. <clears throat> so the, the Wisconsin DNR regionalization grant, it, the one of the only regional facilities in the state of Wisconsin is not eligible for that grant money because there's language that says you have to eliminate an outfall. So essentially they the DNR current language says they, they would want like Baldwin to roll their sewer plant into our sewer plant and eliminate an outfall in order to be eligible. That's what they they think of in their grant funding is regionalization. We believe that regionalization is when a, a group of wastewater plants come together for environmental and fiscal responsible reasons. And so that's, we're gonna try to work on fixing that language there is there generally seems to be some level of support in dnr staff to do that they keep holding Wisconsin, west central biosolids up as a model of regionalization and we've suggested then that that should allow us to get grant funding um if if we're the model then we ought to get get the model funding um, the next slide then talks about kind of our big asks. That's our what we call our legislative funding priorities. And these are not ordered in any particular priority order right now, but West Central Biosolids um, improvements, UWRF Science and Technology Building, and Kinney Corridor implementation, um, the, the three, three projects outlined there. We think it makes sense for the city to go on record as being in favor of direct state and or federal support for these three projects. And so 
obviously UW River Falls Science and Technology is not our project. It's not something the city is building, but it it makes a difference if other partners support it, whether or not the state would get the funding. What this allows us to do is it, if if it's included in the resolution and passed by the council, well, then the mayor can sign letters, the city administrator can assign staff to help with you know, analysis on traffic impacts or other things, you know, tourism impacts or things that might might help. So it allows us to support that project, even though it's a UWRF project. And then the same with biosolids. I mean, we're an owner member of the biosolids. So any money that we get for that will be shared, you know, in, in theory, shared across the members. Um, we We think that that kind of project deserves some direct funding, not just the grant that we talked about, but it could be actually put into the budget bill. Um, and then the Kinney Corridor implementation, we we listed three, there's many projects that are part of the Kinney Corridor that are not listed, but these are the first three that we thought were the primary priorities. This would be the actual physical removal of the dam, Powell Dam, the restoration or the basic restoration sediment um, sediment control for that. And then the, what we call the downtown stormwater plan, which other people have historically called the Lake George rehabilitation plan or the downtown storm sewer interceptor plan. That's a plan that was developed a number of years ago and, and we actually sought EPA funding and we're you know, pretty close to getting some of that um, and, and ultimately we're not awarded those competitive dollars. Scott, I got a question if I could. Sure. The River Fall, the, the University of Technology and Science building would clearly be a benefit to the community and to the and to the uh, surrounding areas. Um, when we get when they calculate the pilot that we get from from the university annually, is it is it based is, is it based, I'm hoping, on like value of 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 the land almost like a tax assessment but not really would this improve our pilot is my question um i'm not sure it would improve our pilot but it is based on historically the the formula is based on the value of property that the university has so in theory it would increase the the um it's called um payment for municipal yeah. service yeah, I'm using it, it, pilot generic, generic, generically. Yeah, it, sorry, it theoretically would increase the payment. Although, as you know, I think as the council's well aware, you know they calculate the payment and then they set an arbitrary amount, and and that equates to twenty percent or something of the calculated amount that they should be paying us to support those buildings. So, so adding one hundred and fifteen million to that is not likely to significantly. It's it's not really a play to get more money, but I understand your point that yeah. potentially we could get, you know, another $5,000 or $1,000 from the state for supporting that new building. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Sure. Going back to uh, slide 12, it talks about Paul Avenue, our, uh, it talks about support increased funding for state and local transportation systems. Um, I think there's room for a potentially good amendment to that by adding uh, support increased funding for state bridges and local transportation systems. So and bridges, and I'm kind of curious what the rest of the council thinks, because Paul Avenue bridge, I believe is gonna be very cost intensive, regardless if we get Department of Transportation funds. So I think a simple amendment might actually uh, help our city in that respect. Yeah, I'd be interested in in uh, the council's reaction to that too. Um, Brant, why don't you show the slide 16 and then we can come to that point. So these are things just if people were wondering kind of what isn't in here, we didn't things that we thought about, but we weren't sure that they needed to go in the list, but that would be, we'd be interested in the council's, um, obviously the council's feedback on this. And then along with that, Sean's comment about the bridge funding. We didn't, 
we didn't include Powell Avenue Bridge as a separate um, funding priority, which we probably could have. And then we could modify that transportation to, to be more specific. The other big transportation thing we didn't include was 29 and FF roundabout. And I know the council's bantered about that. We talked about it. I, you know, I, I raised the white flag um, with that with the DOT. So it, from the staff's perspective, we kind of fought the fight, but we lost and we're not sure it makes a lot of sense to bang our head on the wall about that, but that, you know, the council certainly could say that's the priority, go get some money from the state for that and we could try. Um, and then you see a couple other things we didn't include. So we didn't include any broad COVID relief funding, although council members have talked in the past about support for nonprofits, for arts groups, for downtown businesses. You know, we you could make an argument to include some specific funding for COVID related things from both the state and the federal. Our our general thought is that the state and federal, you know, or associations are doing that lobbying on our behalf in a general sense. Energy assistance funding is something that's helpful. Um, there's a number of you know, we're constantly being asked to sign letters and things related to our support for temporary assistance through um, energy assistance. We kind of lump that in the same category as COVID that we're not sure that needs to be called out, but the council could. Um, there's a number of things that have been taken away from cities related to local zoning authority. Generally, our thought was this is not the legislature in the state to get any of those things back. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to put them on our legislative priorities because um, it, it's not likely that the current uh, majority in the legislature is going to kind of return local zoning authority matters back to us. The town and corporation loophole is timed out. The temporary loophole that was provided for towns to kind of incorporate is, is passed. So I don't know that that's something that needs to get worried about in this current legislative round. And then the dark store loophole, you know, we haven't seen with our, you know, with Shopco and other, Shopco, I guess, is our primary dark store. We haven't seen them try to take advantage of the loophole. So we, it, we have a hard time lobbying hard for that, even though it makes a lot of sense um, uh, state, statewide. So those are things we didn't include. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Bron. I uh, just had a resident contact me. They say that the WebEx link is not working for this meeting and that the it's not streaming on YouTube. Well, let's check with John and see. I've got, it shows on mine live. Yeah. I just, uh, I just went to, uh, I just went to the page. John, can you check? clicked on the link on the council on the agenda for it and I get a event has passed. So we may not be open meeting compliant right now. I, I can get on another computer, but um, the screen that I set up and what it is going to is, is live. Yeah, when I go to the, uh, the agenda notice for this and I click on the visit the web link, I pull up event status, event has passed. So this is the youtube.com slash user slash city of River Falls. Uh, no, the tin, tiny URL.com one. I haven't checked the YouTube one. Uh, and he also said that it wasn't streaming on YouTube, but I didn't check that. I just figured I'd notice. So I, I, I have know. I have people on both as guests, and um, what what I see on the web page, uh, I can dig around. Let's see if I can find this on the. Is City Hall open? Yes, it is. City Hall Thank is you. online. Okay. Yep, the building's open and uh, so are council chambers and it's up on the screens. 
Okay. Oh, just got to notice that he got something there. So. Okay, go ahead, Scott. Sorry. So we highlighted things there that staff did not include, just that we thought council might have talked about in the past. Um, um, so I, if I'd be interested in any feedback the council wants to provide, and if you want to start by telling us what you think you, you'd like to do with the Powell Avenue bridge, just, just for a little context there. We believe internally that our staff has some level of agreement with the DOT staff of slotting the Powell Avenue bridge within the every county gets us allotted so many bridge dollars within the region. And so we we believe that there's agreement on that that's going to be slotted there in um, 22 or 23 for us, but we could include that as a specific legislative priority um then and then we certainly could include it a mention of bridge aid just in the uh um the draft packet language as, as council member downing has indicated so i don't know what folks thought about that or we don't at this point i think mayor if it's okay with you we're just going to open up for any questions comments additions subtractions and again, we're not voting on this at the workshop or anything. We're just getting yeah. directions so we can kind of finalize the draft. Yep, Scott, go ahead. And um, we were also wondering if council could rank their uh, funding choices, priorities. The three you have listed? Yes, for which in order of like one, two, three. Yeah, and at a minimum, even if the council does would not like to put an order on it, um, we are likely to be asked by, at least in a sarcastic way, we're likely to be asked by legislators and their staff, you know, what what do you really want? What's your number one? If you could only get one thing, um, I'm I'm not sure we need to prioritize them, but I think it is helpful to know that if we got into a situation at the last minute where a legislator told us, I can get you this, I can get you one of the two, or I can get you a million dollars for either um, biosolids or kidney corridor, which one would you, would you go for? So I guess you can either leave it up to staff to try to work on with them, or you can give us a prioritization. I think we, we wouldn't mind having a prioritization from the council. Thanks, Brant, for that clarification. Go ahead. Yeah. Yep, go ahead, Diane. Well, thank you. Um, as far as legislative policy priorities, I think the um, improvements to the emergency detention process are absolutely, um, should, should be top of mind. That has been a problem for years. It's um, a threat to the health of our community. Um, it uh, uh, takes, law enforcement resources away from us. Um, and it's a problem not just for us, but for the whole region. So, you know, to the extent that we can uh, put any muscle behind that, um, uh, I think that would be a, a, a good use of time. And I, I can't see, I can only see a couple of people, so you have to just kind of speak up or yell out if you want to talk. Would you like us, Merida? We can bring the presentation down. I don't know if do people want us to keep the presentation up or we can just go into a discussion too. Well, yeah, I think you, if you have to want, bring it back up, you always can. Yeah, Brent, we can take it down and be on the ready. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Hal here. Yeah, go ahead, Hal. There we go. I can see everybody now. Um, I'll just put a, uh, a plug in to, to prioritize the uh, the the removal of the Powell Dam and 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 the restoration and the quarter plan in general um it's it's a decision that we made last uh you know in the in the workshop just recently um with a and, and all and all of those projects I think are are worthy it, it's not the biggest ask of the three um 
Um, I, I don't think we really know yet what we're going to do with the biosolids. So, you know, that's kind of still a question mark in my mind. And um, certainly I think the technology and innovation center would be a boon for the area. But uh, to me, the we're on the hook, uh, so to speak, all together as a community for uh, for that Powell Falls and, and the rest of the corridor. And I, I think that's something we, we definitely want to put some effort into and, and, and having it on here, of course, will help our partners uh, uh, work in concert with us to, to make that happen. Yeah. Ask a related question. Yep. Go ahead, Todd. Um, can someone explain to me the connection? I mean, I get, I get it to a degree, but if they send us money for the bridge, and we're trying to use it for something else or in conjunction with something else, is that going to be an issue or, or are, they, are we able to, to juggle that and make it work? Yeah, I, I would suspect that bridge money will be specifically designated because a good chunk of the bridge money is federally derived gas tax, I believe. So typically the state, the reason the state has putting so much into each pot is because they're getting some they're getting some from the state so the pots a certain size and they like to keep the bridges kind of as a separate item so we probably um from a practical standpoint though council member if if, if we don't get any money for the bridge from the state we would have to use likely other transportation money to do it so to the extent that we do get bridge money it keeps us from having to impact our street resurfacing budget or our seal you know crack filling or other things so i guess in a related sense it does it's all related transportation funding but the bridge in particular we're trying to get at a specific pot of money that the that's spent on bridges in the counties um if if powell if Powell Bridge is done, that means some other bridge within St. Croix County has to wait, you know, potentially another year or something. But wouldn't the bridge and the dam removal be connected in terms of process, construction process? Um, oh, no. Falls Bridge, that's up, up, up near, uh, that's in I'm, up yeah. the you're talking about, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the wrong one. You're talking no, about let, one yeah, let me be bridge. clear. It's the pa yeah. Powell, Powell sorry. Avenue Bridge. Yep, yep. Um, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Yep, go ahead, Ms. Morissette. So as a follow-up question, um, on the Powell Avenue Bridge, and I don't want to wander too far here, but when we sort of fought the good fight with the DOT over 29 and double F, one of the things that we used to incentivize that discussion was, was the um, – the assessments that we that we did on those properties and and the uh, different things that we took and if I'm not mistaken, there's a pot of money there. I'm not going to the number because I moved around. Could we use that money in in the transportation pool of the River Falls or in the city of River Falls? We needed to specifically on transportation. I, I I think we got the gist of it. You kind of cut out at the end. Yeah, so I, I believe the question was can you use um can you use the the developer capital um assessments for the Powell Bridge or or something else? And the answer is no. Those those dollars are specifically re related to a geographic location. Essentially, they were monies collected from the developer. Um, and there's outlined projects that those are eligible for that, which includes, you know, Cemetery Road and uh, 29 and Double F, Green, Greenwood Valley Drive, et cetera. So it, we don't move. We don't have a practice of moving. I guess we haven't checked the legality of if we could, but we don't have a practice of moving capital contributions from one one development area into another. Thank you. Who's next? 
questions about anything? Wanting something added, something took away? So I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Yep, go ahead, Sean. So Scott, um, how do you feel? Do you think a simple amendment would be enough, be able enough to add um, uh, bridges, which would include Powell uh, Avenue Bridge, or do you think it would need its own separate one um, designation and I ask? Yeah, I think given our good relationship with the DOT on that particular project, meaning we see somewhat eye to eye, I think your suggestion of adding bridges to our general policy ask on transportation makes a lot of sense. I think that's very positive change that would, um, I think DOT staff would see that as, as non-confrontational. Uh, some, sometimes when, and so what I mean, I want to be clear about that. I mean, we're on your behalf, staff, your staff, city staff is establishing relationships with state staff, DOT, DNR, um, wastewater, you name it. And so we're, we're making some, we make some policy and other asks on your behalf based on what you've given us direction on and creating a working relationship. And I think sometimes when the council when a, when a legislative body then says well we don't like going through the process so to speak with staff and we want to draw out this specific thing which which could be an impact if we kind of separately list powell but that's not why we didn't include powell i i don't think there's a big worry here that you're going to offend dot staff so i based on what you're suggesting i think that's a really good addition you know, to, to clarify that bridges are important. It does give us a, a, and it gives Brandt a specific opportunity then and Crystal Raleigh, city engineer Raleigh, the opportunity to say, hey, you know, just so you know, the council's included this in our priorities and then we can talk to legislators, we can talk to the DOT secretary. And ultimately we are making requests to the governor. You know, the, the governor has to be part of this request. So there, there's gonna be a letter from the mayor saying here's what we talked about as a city and asking the governor to support um, that when it comes if it's included in the legislate legislation <coughs> excuse me then we don't want the governor to veto it so you have to do some homework and legwork to try to make sure that even you first get over the hurdle of getting it in the legislature in the budget bill in whatever the governor can line item veto very specific items. He can go right in and take a River Falls item out if he doesn't want it. Um, and so we want to make sure we get buy-in for both. So I'd say that bridge language makes a lot of sense. If the council felt really strongly that Powell Avenue Bridge should be put um, towards the top, you could. Um, I'm not, I think it may detract from your ass though on the, on the, Kinney River corridor a little bit. So I you might want to have you might want to keep the spotlight on the Kinney corridor. Would okay, so one quick question. Do we need to make an amendment if I wanted to to uh, slide 12 and just add it to the transportation before it's transportation systems? Yeah, you don't you don't need to make any so I should just add it. You you can make amendments to provide a specific direction, but you're not taking any action and you're not you're not working off a resolution document tonight. You're just giving council's direction. This is going to have to come back to you at another meeting where you, then you actually could, Sean, amend the document. So I guess we'd be looking, if there's no objection raised by your fellow council members, I think the adding the bridge language makes some sense. And that would be in the multimodal transportation long-term funding paragraph. Correct. Correct. I think that's where we would think it makes a lot of sense to include. I would support that. Yep. Two. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing everybody's okay with that. Uh, Mr. Plunkett, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As we look at what that for legislative priorities here, I think that there are things that we put on there that very obviously will impact the fiscal health of our municipality and of the 
region here that we're in, I think that we're ignoring with our legislative priorities the biggest issue that is impacting our future as a city and a regional economy, and that is the current pandemic. I think that our legislature and our governor need to start taking action and stop ignoring this problem. And I think that we are enabling that ignoring that problem by ignoring it as a council. That proper PPE needs to be distributed to our residents to help alleviate the pandemic and the hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars that the ongoing medical care that is unnecessary that the people that survive are going to be incurring. I think that we are doing a disservice to our residents by not as a elected body looking out for the best interest. And that includes addressing the pandemic and making sure that we have proper PPE and legislation to alleviate this to the best of our ability. Okay, anybody else? Yep, go ahead, Mr. Watson. Um, Mr. Plunkett, would you be looking to add a, a bullet and supporting language in the legislative policy priorities section around that, like uh, the city supports legislation that would provide local communities with protective equipment and 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 like what else what kind of what kind of paragraph are you thinking of, of of putting in there well thank you mr watson i think that that's an excellent idea and one of the potential ways that we could deal with this um i think that this is something that deserves coming before this body to be discussed and not ignored. And we can discuss that a little bit now, but I think potentially this is really deserving of an agenda item, something that's open for public comment, not just in our legislative priorities now, but in the overall big picture. As far as addressing it in legislative priorities now, I think that you have brought forward uh, an idea that I think would help alleviate the problem for our residents. Hal, did that answer your question? I, I think so. I, I mean, I'm curious to hear what other council members have to say on this topic. Okay. So would, is everybody, would everybody be okay to putting something in the legislative policy about um, the state supporting small towns or all to all towns, all cities with proper equipment for citizens, something along that line, COVID stuff? I think we can specify in there uh, N95, that's a IOSH recognized standard for PPE. Uh, making those accessible to our local communities and at low or no cost to the citizens of Wisconsin. Yeah, a couple other things, I guess, along that lines, it certainly would be, we'd be happy to try to draft some language that the council could, could uh, deliberate in regards to the council member Plunkett's um, suggestion about a separate item on the agenda. Obviously that's up to up to the council in the context of the legislative priorities, we probably can go pretty far. Um, I, I'm guessing we'd also, Mr. Plunkett, include things like continued support for the uh, rapid testing center through the UW. Um, we'd include things like uh, meeting some kind of goals for vac vaccine, our share of the vaccine, so to speak. Um, so, I, I mean, there's probably some language out there that Brant and I can find um, 
we are, I mean, just so everybody knows in the council, when we're talking to legislators currently, we are providing them with the crushing COVID um, information. And we are indicating that we, you know, we are part of the let's do our part um, coalition. And so we're, we're not being um, obtuse about the city council's kind of unanimous support for COVID health measures and things within the community. So, um, but certainly legislative priorities, as we indicated in our slide presentation, could could include specific COVID related um, COVID related language. Um, we have advocated on behalf of the city that any federal money. I know when I talked to Representative Kine's office, um, I I always advocate for direct uh, distribution of funds to cities. Uh, not going through the state or counties that we were happy to get um, direct allocation of funds from from the federal government and then we've done the same with the city with the state when we talk to them but uh, we haven't come up with an ask or an amount or specific impacts so in between now and uh, Brant, what uh, was this? What was the tentative schedule for bringing this back to council? The next uh, meeting, next not tonight, but obviously the next meeting, or was it the first meeting in uh, March? Yeah, it would have been um, if we were going to do it like we did in 2019. It would have been the next meeting, so it would have been 23rd. But if we need more time, and we can do it in the first meeting in March. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know that we need more time as staff. Although Brant might want some more time, but um, I think, given what I've heard, we can look at some language, and then certainly if uh, Council Member Plunkett or Watson or others have language that they think would be key, it's fine for us to kind of have some of that ahead of time to to work on. And then I, uh, full disclosure, I certainly always confer with the mayor um, when we're putting together some of these drafts to try to understand where. Where he might be at, um, given his veto um, ability. Okay. Is anybody else? Is everybody okay with doing something like that, with the language for Scott and Brant to look at? I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Anybody else got anything when it comes to the legislative stuff? So to clarify, we may, we are trying to collect and be more efficient about our legislative things. That doesn't mean that the staff will just ignore everything else that happens for the rest of the year. Certainly as things become issues, we, we may bring those to the council for you to take action on or pass resolutions, further resolutions, but this gives us a good start um, out of the gate. Currently, when we're meeting with legislators, we are telling them that the council has not passed any of these and that it's all in draft form. And so um, the other thing we, we are able to give them is copies of our approved capital improvements plan, which you will also be updating this year. Um, but what we can use the current one to show them, hey, this is the council's already made this priority to fund these projects. You know, we'd like to get some money for that. Um, as an aside, I'm not aware of any council members at this point, nor the mayor indicating that you would like us to hire lobbyists um, for these priorities. Is that a correct understanding of your current? You'd like us to do your our best as staff, but right now you're not looking to fund $100,000 in lobbying to try to, to win a couple million dollars. Correct. I would agree with that. Me too. I agree. Okay. Okay. Mr. Nope. Mayor, I have one point I'd like to make if I could. Yep, go ahead, Sean. Um, in, in the state of Wisconsin, we have our own municipal league, and um, some of these broader, bigger ideas that we hear about, um, they do a really good job um, representing every city as a group, and they have they have their own lobbying. You know, I just 
would like to take a moment to just encourage all the council members to um, think about the local priorities and what we're looking at here. Thank you. Mayor. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, go ahead. I'll just show my support for uh, what's been put together as far as legislative priorities. I think uh, we've talked uh, in pretty good length about every one of those um, in this meeting, but then also previous meeting workshop. Um, I think definitely uh, to push our state uh, legislators and senators on these items is important. Thanks, Mr. Gagne. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, go ahead, Jason. Um, if I could just share with the mayor, council, and with Scott, um, in, in terms of the open meeting issue, um, council chambers it is and was open. It is actively streaming. We did have an issue with, with the YouTube um, streaming that has since been fixed. The meeting is streaming on YouTube. And the links on the on the workshop and council meeting agendas are correct if you were to type that in directly or copy and paste it however and i might be using the wrong wording but however if you click on it the, where the hyperlink is actually pointed to if you click on it is not pointed to the right location if you will again i don't i'm not sure john can probably chastise me later for using the wrong language um, but staff is um actively trying to resolve that issue prior to 6 30. Jason. Okay. Very well said. Thank you. As Mr. Okay. Mayor. Yep. As somebody that runs live streams weekly, um, I appreciate John and staff uh, for all they do. Sometimes you just can't fix it and you've done everything right. So I appreciate you guys and the hard work you do. Okay. So does anybody else have anything about the workshop? Well, if everybody's okay, we'll take a little break before, um, John, you want everybody just to stay on for the council meeting, right? Yes, please. Okay. Yep. Uh, you can um, stop your video and mute. Okay. Um, but uh, we can just have just our names hanging out there and I will pause recording. Okay. Um, but we'll let the stream go. Okay. Oh, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Brent, for all your work. You did a great job on this, Brent. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Three, two, one. There you go. Okay. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the February 9th River Falls City Council meeting. First thing we'll do is say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, America, States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay. Uh, Christy, can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Yeah. Stead. Here. Downing. Here. Gagne. Here. Gagne? Here. Here. More set. Here. Odine. Here. Plunkett. Here. Watson. Here. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Christy. Next round of approval minutes from the January 26th regular meeting and the January 19th joint workshop minutes. I move approval. Second. Questions or comments from anyone? Chris, do we have first and second on the minutes? I have first by Morissette, a second by Downing. We'll start the voting with Mr. Plunkett. Aye. Odine. Aye. Watson. Aye. Gagne. Aye. Morissette. Aye. Downing. Aye. Hearstead. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the approval of the bills of Mr. <clears throat> Beerstead. Mayor and Council, I move to approve payment of bills in the amount of $2,867,963.63, subject to the Comptroller's review. Second. Uh, first and second on the bills. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> Christy, we have first and second on the bills. A first by Beerstead, a second by Watson. Start the voting with Ms. Odin. 
Aye. Downing. Aye. Morissette. Aye. Gagne. Aye. Watson. Aye. Beerstead. Aye. Plunkett. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Okay, next we'll move on to public comments. Uh, John, you said somebody was at City Hall would like to talk? That is correct. Okay. Can you, can you, uh, we don't have the, uh, the video of City Hall. What? We don't have the video. Oh, there, I'm sorry. There it is. There we go. Sorry. Yep. You can come up and say his name. And So I'm Matt Johnson, owner of the Garage Bikes and Brews with my wife, Stephanie. I just heard from Ben Plunkett about this meeting tonight. I don't know if I should be speaking now or after you talk about it. About the 631 ordinance, what, 2021 02. Um, there's a couple of things that I've read in your notes. You talk about having a Class B license. According to the getting the brewer's permit, you cannot have a Class B license and be a brewery at the same time. That's Chapter 125, Sub. 29 in the Wisconsin statutes. I'm caught off guard. I just pulled all this stuff yep. up in the last hour. And we are also classified as a brewery. And in your notes, you thought we were a brew pub, but we are a brewery. Um, we, we're not a brew pub through the federal and state. We're classified as a brewery. Okay. I don't know if there's anything else you need for me at this time. Um, Matt, why don't you, uh, yeah, why don't you, I, can you, will you be there for a little bit? Yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming, um, Scott, I don't know if you would know the answer to this, but all the, all the state, all the state uh, statutes are going to, will override anything we have, correct? As far as his licensing goes? Yeah, the state city can't pass a law that's in, in in conflict with the state statute. So that that rules the day. The intent of the ordinance, though, city ordinance, was um, to provide clarification and consistency. So to the extent it doesn't, those would be those would be of interest to staff. Okay. Okay. Thank, thanks, Matt. I appreciate you bet. Appreciate your time. John, was there anybody else there? Uh, no, there's no one else here. Okay, thanks. Mr. Mayor, I have a public comment. Yep, go ahead, Sean. Um, I had the privilege and opportunity to tour our neighbor's place recently, and I just wanted to encourage the rest of the council to visit their location at 122 West Johnson Street. Uh, if they haven't done so recently, they are excited to talk about their new expanded programs, advocacy, and services they offer our community as a non-for-profit. Their main emphasis is transitional housing, but they have a lot of different services they offer. Their location has a second hand store, uh, for a close and other essentials that is open to the public. Uh, they have asked the council to visit so they can be aware of their expanded services for our community. And uh, their contact number is 715-426-9000. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Mr. Hey, Mayor? Otherwise, yes, go ahead, Diane. Thanks. I just wanted to um, uh, take a quick opportunity to remind people that there is a primary on um, Tuesday, February 16th, um, and uh, there is early in-person voting at City Hall, I think generally during the hours between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., although they're open until 5 on Friday. So um, uh, feel free to come in. It's easy. Thank you. Okay. So now I will close the council hearing and open up a public hearing on ordinance number 2021-01 ending shoreland protection regulations of the municipal code. This is the second reading of the disposition. And this would be for the amending the shoreland protection regulations of the, the municipal code. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to talk about this? John, John, I'm assuming we have some people on the phone. Uh, we have, yes, we have some people, um, Renslow's and Gordon Awesome. Okay. Uh, they, they can speak if they would like, or they don't have to. Yep. But they're in. Okay. 
Good evening, uh, yeah. Gordon. I'm 12 on River Drive, Meekinick Township, uh, and uh, I am a, a real estate developer uh, who has a contract with the Renslows to. Out, oh, Mr. Awesome, we can't hear you. Did we lose him, John? Who um, might want to take off his video and his audio on? <clears throat> right again. Working very well. There we go. Try that. I'll move somewhere. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Pardon my uh, bad. Nope, you're... So I have uh, the uh, site under contract with the rents to develop it in accordance with the uh, uh, master plan for uh, the city presented uh, Broadway district plan uh, last uh, October of 19 to the city. And I know that hasn't been fully reviewed, but um, I thought it was a very good plan. The Ares Associates put it together, and, and we think it's We lost you again, Gordon. Can't can't hear you, Gordon. Can you hear me now? There you go. Yep. Okay. Well, I just want to say that uh, <clears throat> we'd like to move forward with a proposal for this land and the settlement of the shoreland ordinance is what's necessary for that. But uh, we would ask you to consider uh, giving yourself flexibility on this site uh it is almost entirely flat uh, down to a 75 foot back level and uh, the staff has indicated a 100 100 foot setback level that uh, almost everything is gained uh, in protection of the river corridor uh, staff has done a great job and um, it's a city and there's lots of different uh development uh, scenarios there and, and I'm hoping in considering the ordinance you'll give yourself further flexibility and uh, we look forward to coming before the council in the future when that's decided. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Awesome. And uh, Dorenzo, would you guys like to talk? Yeah, I yes, guess. Um, can you hear me? Yes. We were just uh, hoping that you all got out to maybe visit the land for I know a lot of you didn't before the last time. Um, there is a lot of buildable land, you know, definitely within that 120 foot setback. What we hope that you would consider, um, you know, with the proper uh, storm sewer and retention ponds and whatever needs to be, just like the downtown area, that 75 feet would be considered. Um, and without that, you know, proper storm sewer and, you know, what the city would approve that you would at least move it to 100 feet. Okay. Do you have anything else to say? Not other than we think it's buildable land because it's so flat there and we just hope you consider um, what we're up against and it's just such a difference between the downtown area versus the uh, outside area, which is only blocks away. And um, we hope y'all got a chance to go out and look at it and stuff and view that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Uh, John, was there anybody else that wanted to talk for, on this one, on this public hearing? To my knowledge, no. 
Okay. So I will close the public hearing and we'll open up the council hearing and take a motion on this. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the um, shoreland. I'm trying to get back to it here. Apologize. I'm trying to get the number. Uh, shoreland ordinance currently in front of us. Ordinance number 2021-01. <laughs> Sorry. Second. Second. Okay, got first and second. Uh, <clears throat> questions, comments, discussion? Mr. Mayor, I, I uh, at the previous meeting, uh, talked quite a bit about um, exploring the 75 foot setback and gaining some storm water uh, on site. Um, and, and I'm talking now, I'm talking about this ordinance as it applies to all properties in the city. Uh, I know the Renslows and Mr. Awesome are interested in theirs, but I, I think we should make sure we're talking about all the properties in the city, uh, not just a, sp a specific property. So in, in exploring that, I talked uh, this afternoon with, with um, city engineer Raleigh and uh, we talked through the, <clears throat> we talked through the, the uh, 75 foot setback with storm water. And as we were having that conversation, it became pretty clear to me that um, that storm water at a 75 foot setback would need to be pretty robust and um, more robust than what we have currently for some of our storm water uh, situations. So I don't know that uh, 75 feet with storm water would be practical uh, around town um, in, and we can only do it inside the hundred uh, the hundred, the 1982 boundary. Um, so I think as much as I would love to see stormwater management, uh, in, in that site, I, I don't think that it's practical. I think it presents too many challenges to both the landowner and the city staff to figure that out. Having said that, I do think that the hundred foot setback is appropriate based on the DNR's direction that they feel that that's appropriate. So based on that, I would uh, make a motion to amend the setback from 120 as proposed to 100 feet. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? I have a question for Mr. Simpson. Yep. Uh, Mr. Simpson, what's the state standard for shoreline setbacks? Um. Yeah, the state standard, I guess, related to local ordinances. Is that what you're asking? Um, so we have um, some minimum and maximums that we have to deal with related to this pre-1982 and post-82. But I believe, and, and Community Development Director Peterson's on the available also, I believe that the, the minimum we can set is 75 foot um, does that answer your question? It does. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Anybody else have any anything on this? Yep, Mr. Plunkett. Just want to clarify a potential conflict of interest as we're looking at this. Uh, property that I own appears to be covered by the existing shoreland setback and would not be covered by the new shoreland set let back uh, at the far end of that property. And, and I'm looking for guidance on how to approach this as far as disclosure of conflict of interest and if this is something that I should abstain on or what, what would be the proper action at that point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Scott, would you just assume that if, if he thinks it's a conflict, he should abstain? Um, well, Council members always have the ability to abstain um, related to even the perception of conflict, but you having a property in town doesn't automatically create a conflict of interest. I, you know, um, Attorney Gerhardt could provide you an opinion, a quick opinion here at the council meeting, if you if you'd like. The, the real question is, would you have a, some kind of financial gain specific to your property, not? Generally, it's not broad categories of properties that are included. Is that correct, Attorney Gerhardt? That's correct. So, you know, if broad categories of property were included, every time a zoning ordinance was brought up that could potentially affect your property, you'd have to recuse yourself. So for some potential de minimis 
change in value. I don't feel you need to recuse yourself, but if you felt like you wanted to, you certainly could. Okay. So, uh, did, Mr. Uh, did you hear that, Mr. Yeah. Councilmember Plunkett? Oh, you. The tail end of that. Sorry. Yeah. So you essentially the advice is that you do not have a conflict, of, a legal conflict of interest, um, unless you know of some specific thing that we don't know about your property that would, you know, somehow in significantly increase the value. But just being in a broad category of properties that would be influenced by it, it doesn't present a conflict, but you always can, if you if you prefer to avoid perception, you certainly have the ability to do that. Thank you, Administrator Simpson. And I just uh, appreciate that and just think that it is something that I wanted to make the public aware of. So a reminder, Mr. Mayor, I think you've got a uh, first and a second on an amendment. You, Likely we want to talk about the amendment and then vote on that. Mr. Mayor? And you're muted, Mr. Mayor. Pardon. Go, Pardon? go ahead, are you Dan. calling on me? Oh, yep, go you. ahead, Dan. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I, I was just wondering if anyone can speak to what difference an additional 25, 20 feet would or would not mean um, for the kinney. I can take a shot at that and if I need to bring another staff, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I believe the extra okay. 20 feet is specifically because we have very steep slopes, you know, greater than 15 up to 25% on those tributaries and including the kinney. So, the erosion potential on those deep slopes is very high. So that additional 20 feet is there to protect those slopes. It is also a consideration to allow additional green space along the Kinney for um, not only, I know at the last meeting, Hal talked about, or council member Watson talked about um, green space for wildlife, but there's also the consideration of green space for the public as well. If we had that green corridor and could um, put in trails in the future for us to recreate as well, that would also be a consideration. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else have anything on the amendment? In the discussion, um, I second it. Um, I'm always very cautious of limiting private property owners and their property rights. Um, obviously, there's going to be a strong balance of um, the environment and making sure that we're taking care of the river and the and the eco habitat that's there. Um, but at the same point, I think River Falls has done a really good job of ensuring and, and property owners have done a really good job of ensuring that they're taking care of the river. And I think that uh, you know, a balanced approach um, is being met here by my second and Scott's first on the 100 foot setback. Um, this doesn't remove any other requirements that we would have as far as water um, runoff into the river or any other um, environmental protections that we have. I think um, we 20 feet is a long distance when you're looking at building a house or building any kind of structures or doing anything on a property. So I think it's definitely a happy medium. I'd love to see it 75 feet. Um, but at the same point, uh, I'm happy with the hundred. So, okay. Anybody else? Mr. Mayor, I, I made my, my yep. points really last week. So, um, you know, I think, I think the 120 feet is appropriate. I think that, uh, that staff did a, um, the staff did a good job and, and, in the diagrams that they presented to us and our, both in our packet and, and that were considered in the. Planning Commission um, uh, packet um, specifically around runoff and these, you know, high rain events that we've been having and water running off of, of rooftops and then heading right down those slopes. You know, I, I think that's probably the main concern. And and I would and echo what Mr. Moore said. Said I think I think he is correct about the. Um, uh, the ability on these steep slopes to um, 
capture that rainwater in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a practical way when it gets above a particular you know a particular threshold. So, in my mind, that extra twenty feet you know uh, buys. Uh, uh, the river, some protection, and, and I, I'm, I'm for it. I think it's worth it. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Mayor. Yep. Go ahead, Sean. Um, question for Mr. Simpson. Just to just to recap this, um, that amendment would create what you'd call extra bonus um, stormwater drainage, correct? That's not how I understand the amendment. Okay. How? How? No, I mean like putting it at that. That's part that that's a, a side effect of it, right? Yeah, well, sure. Council Member Down, I understand the amendment to be shortening the distance from 120 to 100 for the shoreline setback um, in the pre 1982 um, area. That would be the modification I understand being made. And there isn't, uh, I understood the Council Member Moore set had indicated he didn't think that, you know, it was practical to include stormwater language given the state construction. Basically, the state is not allowing us to, to kind of do that on a enhanced basis in the, okay. the post 1982 areas. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, thank you, Scott. That helps clear it up for me. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so Christy, we have first and a second on the amendment to move it to 100 feet. Yes, yeah, so a first by Morissette, a second by Gagne. Do you want to go ahead and vote on the amendment, Mayor? Yeah, let's vote on the amendment first. Okay, we'll start with Mr. Morissette. Aye. Watson. Aye. Plunkett. Aye. Kanye. Yes. Odin. Nay. Beerstead. Aye. Downing. Aye. Four to three in favor. Okay. Next, we'll. Uh, was there any more discussion on the original, um, original ordinance? Okay, Chris. Do we have first and a second on the original ordinance? The first by Morissette, a second by Watson. We'll start the vote with Mr. Gagne. Uh, just a yep. clar point of clarification. Oh. This is the, the motion as amended. Right. Sorry. Ordinance motion. amended. Yes. Yep. Uh, Mr. Gagne? Yes. Plunkett? Aye. Beerstead? Aye. Morissette? Aye. Downing? Aye. Odine? Aye. Watson? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we'll close the council hearing and open up a public hearing on ordinance 2021-2, creating chapter 17.117 uh, breweries, brew pubs, wineries, and distilleries. This is a second reading and disposition. And I know, uh, the Johnsons were there. They had talked before if they wanted to talk some more. Um, Amy, they had some questions about some of the stuff in there. If you could maybe help them with their answers. Hello, I'm Matt Johnson, W10439, 880th Avenue, River Falls. My wife, Stephanie, and I own the Garage Bikes Brews. I had a couple questions about the ordinance that you're trying to pass or working on passing. Um, clarification, we are not a brew pub, we are a brewery through the state and the federal licensing. Um, I think I read that you wanted us to have a class B license. Well, if we're a brewery, we cannot have a class B license. That's one of the stipulations that allows us to do what we're doing. And also we are allowed to um, sell other microbreweries beer, as long as it's from a Wisconsin brewery that produces less than 300,000 barrels per year. Those are three of the things that I 
had concerns with, with what you're doing. So I guess that's all. If you could help clarify those, that would help me. And Mr. Mayor, I just thought of, um, for protocol, I, you should accept the comments into the public hearing. And then you can, if there isn't any more comments from the public, you can close the public hearing and then either the mayor or the council could certainly ask those questions and then the okay. staff staff can provide them. But just okay. on a public hearing, you want you want the petitioner or Mr. Johnson to be able to enter his comments onto the record and then typically uh, the, the mayor or the council would then ask those questions if they want those questions answered and obviously staff will try to try to answer those questions but okay mr mayor could i Sorry? ask a question a clarifying question of the of mr johnson yeah go ahead matt can you point to uh, specifically where and in, in the ordinance i apologize uh you must know exactly where those are at yeah i do hold on a second here Yep. Um, it's in the Wisconsin Brewery Statute, um, page 22 of that. It's chapter 125.29. It explains all the difference, what we the can and can't do's of a brewery. And, the, and then there's another article there. Um, Move my page here. The difference between a brewery and a brew pub it's some there's some one of the main differences is we're not serving food a brew pub has to serve a certain percentage of food and we don't do that at all so besides snacks so we don't have a kitchen or a restaurant or anything thank you okay yep go ahead mr plunkett uh, uh, thanks thank you mr mayor and Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I, I called him today with some questions about this and it really uh, helped clarify uh, some of those issues for me. It's an area that I don't have a lot of understanding on and I know takes many, many hours to understand the law about what Mr. Johnson has had to do. Um, I think that the confusion here as we're looking at the ordinance written is that um, the city staff had thought that they were a brew pub and licensed as a brew pub and not as a brewery. And that in our ordinance brings into questions regarding the zoning uh, grid that we've set up that's allowed for breweries. Um, and that um, a potential solution here that people might be interested in examining is further defining that category of nano brewery so that Mr. Johnson is assured that his business is in compliance and will continue to be in compliance uh, with any expected activity that he's doing there uh, with zoning and regulation. Um, Mr. Mr. And, Plunkett, might I, I'm sorry for interrupting, but might I suggest this might be better Discuss when we get to once we close the public hearing and oh, go into our yes yeah <laughs> my bad my bad sorry yeah. no Thank I just first, uh, just think it may be more appropriate there okay well uh, Mr Johnson thank you we we'll, we will make your comments part of the public hearing all right and we will we will close the public hearing and open up the council hearing and that now uh, let's. Uh, Amy, would it be would it be easier to try to answer some of Matt's questions? Would it be easier? To, what's the easiest for you guys to handle that? Yeah. And then, we can, so, and then we can move back to Mr. Plunkett. Yes. Yeah, so staff has been chatting back and forth since um, <laughs> since they were making comment in the beginning, and so we're trying to get a handle on on where we're at with the ordinance. Um, okay. We, you know, the intent of the ordinance is to keep all current businesses conforming. Yep. And um, it, it sounds like we were intending them to be classified as a microbrewery as the ordinance states, not a state statute comes okay. in. Um, and city planner um, 
how can speak to this as well. Um, but we did notice that we don't have microbrewery in listed in the table, um, which we should. Uh, so I think there's probably an amendment to be made if council is um, is okay with that this evening. And if they are okay with the intent of keeping current establishments um, conforming as the ordinance goes forward. So would, would council be more comfortable with this coming back to us with, with said amendments and said rewriting? Yep. Mr. Go Mayor? Ms. Yep. I, I, I would be a little more comfortable with um, uh, some more input from staff and something um, new in front of me. Um, uh, so I would move to table this, um, this ordinance. Second. Okay. So we have first and a second on tabling. Um, so Amy, could you guys bring this back to us? We need to vote on that, yeah. Mr. Oh. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yep, go ahead. I, I do have go a question. Is this, this isn't going to interfere with anybody's business in the meantime, though, correct? No. no. Okay, that's no. all I care about. No, no. So let, let's, uh, let's vote on tabling at first, then we'll come back to Ms. Peterson. Chrissy, we have first and second on tabling ordinance. I, I can't remember the name. Uh, Twenty twenty one dash zero two. Yes. Uh, first by Odin, second by Beerstead. We'll start the vote with Mr. Watson. Aye. Plunkett. Aye. Beerstead. Aye. Morset. Aye. Kanye. Aye. Downing. Aye. Odin. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. So, Amy, you guys can get together and kind of go over this. Yes, not a problem. We'll have it back at the next meeting. Thanks. I, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, we will move on to uh, what do we have? We have some reports. We have our first biannual strategic plan update. Um, this is for the this is for the third and fourth quarters of 2020. Now, we, will, the, will there be any questions on this? Or are we going to have uh, who will be giving us a little presentation on this? Mr. Mayor, we don't have a presentation plan. Okay. We can provide, you know, we can answer questions. There's certainly lots of things to be proud about, but we're also, right. we'll also be bringing back some of that in our annual reports. So it's up okay. to the council. We're happy to talk about anything, including the report, or wait until a future time to do so. Okay. It's at the council's preference. Did anybody have anything on the stuff that was in the agenda about this? Yep, go ahead, Mr. Dowling. Um, Mr. Simpson, I have a question. Um, why isn't uh, Paul Avenue Bridge included in this plan? Um, Paul Avenue Bridge was not anticipated as a strategic initiative when this, this plan was put together. So this was this is a two year, two years worth of initiatives that we put together. And at the time, it was not identified as a, well, it was identified in the long-term capital plan, but it was not a strategic initiative. How would you rate it at this moment? Um, it, it certainly uh, deserves to be in our new draft of strategic initiatives. I would agree. Administrator's report. Anybody have anything for Scott? Scott, if you have anything for anybody? Uh, while you're thinking of any questions, I do do want to mention that um, City City Hall is open and available for um, uh, in-person absentee voting. Uh, that's Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 4.30, and then Friday, 8.30 to 5. This would be for the February 16th election. If you do want to vote absentee, you really need to uh, get those requests in. Our uh, clerk's office is obviously trying to get those requests timely filled at this point, but um, we're not doing the mail service ourselves, so we have to um, 
rely on somebody else to get that from here to you. Um, so at this, we will have polls open and on the 16th and everyone should um, understand that we'll be prepared to take in-person voting as safe as manner as possible um, on the 16th. That is for the state superintendent schools primary and the city council district three primary on the 16th. Um, we're dealing with the cold weather like everybody else, um, trying to keep operations going so far so good, uh, and keep our operators safe um, while keeping those operations going. Um, and as the council's aware, we did open um, the Glen Park uh, storm shelter open as a warming. We have had some, some utilization of that uh, shelter. We'll continue to keep that open uh, till about 9 a.m. The, the planned um, plan to keep that temporary shelter open until about 9 a.m. on Monday, based on what the weather forecast looks like um, for the rest of this week and through the weekend. Okay, Mr. Mayor. And, yep, go ahead. Hey, I'd just like to reach out uh, and give a thanks to uh, Mike Stifter and uh, public sta uh, water staff um, driving by uh, corner of Kennedy and South 6th Street the other day. Um, the street looked a little brown on the edge of the road and noticed that it was uh, a little wet. There was water flowing and um, sent a message over to Mike. And as always, Mike jumped right into action, had a city staff member out there probably about a half an hour before the Super Bowl started. So uh, appreciate uh, staff to get out there and do their hard work taking care of us. Um, they were out there, I believe, this morning and got that repaired and um, just appreciate them going out on these really cold days and um, making sure that uh, we have functional water and sewer in our city. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else have anything for Scott? Okay. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Plunkett. Thank you. Uh, Scott, what do we have for availability of proper N95 uh, masks for the poll workers who are going to be in close contact with voters on election day. Yeah, currently the guidance that we've received, um, it does not include N95 masks for the poll workers. We do have a supply of N95 available for um, uh, limited use with public safety. So right now I understand we have a public safety supply of N95s, but um, I think we were getting so maybe Jason has an update on uh, oh, I'm getting I'm getting updates the world of technology city clerk has reported that we do have n95 masks for poll workers now. <laughs> Thank you city clerk. Thank okay. you city okay. clerk very much. Okay, anybody else. Hey, I just want to pile on. I was a little slow to the trigger <laughs> just on Chris Gagne's comment. Um, I just. You know, I need to do to give a shout out to the water crew on that too. Those guys, I mean, out there at 10 below, 15 below, fixing a water leak, they need credit. So Greg Kaler and Ron Growth and that crew, just what an excellent job they do. And uh, I just need to make sure that they get credit for going out there on below zero weather, working on our water system. So yep. Chris, thank you for pointing that out. And I just want to make sure our crews get acknowledged for that. That's all, thank you. Good, thanks Kevin. Thanks, everybody. Okay, next we'll move on to some announcements. Uh, I have a couple of appointments I'd like to make. Uh, I'd like to reappoint uh, Mike Pepin through December of 2023 to the bid board. Uh, I'd like to reappoint Lisa Moody through May of 2024 to the Planning Commission. And I have a new appointment of uh, Chris Holcomb through May of 2024 for the Planning Commission. I'll take a motion. I move approval for mayor's appointments. Second. First and a second, any discussion? Chris, do you have first and a second on appointments? First by Downing, a second by Watson. We'll start the vote with Mr. Beerstead. Aye. Downing? Aye. Plunkett? Odin? Aye. Gagne? Aye. Watson? Aye. More set. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Okay, uh, we will be uh, 
going into closed session now for the following reasons. The, uh, de deliberating <coughs> or negotiating the purchasing of public property, investing of public funds, or conducting other, speci blah, 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 blah. other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session to vote. Um, I'm sorry, to it. Uh, site redevelopment and conferring with legal counsel for the government body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to be come involved to wit property near city compost site. So I need a sec I need a first and a second on this. Uh, motion to enter into closed session. Second. second. Okay, Christy, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, yeah, so the first by Mr. Plunkett, second by Morstead. Start the vote with Mr. Plunkett. Aye. Wadeen. Aye. Watson. Aye. Gagne. Aye. Morissette. Aye. Doning. Aye. Beerstead. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Okay, we are closed session. Oh, wait, can you just? John? Yeah, go yes, ahead, John. Uh, there's a bunch of switches and things to do, so. You're fine, let us know. Okay, thank you. And, record, and recording. I see live as well. Oh, good, John. Okay. Okay, welcome back to open session, everybody. And I will take a motion on the resolution to disallow the claim against the city. Mr. Mayor, I make the motion that we disallow the claim um, uh, brought in front of us from the Furmans. Second. Okay. I, I don't. I don't think we need any discussion. We've discussed everything. Unless somebody has something. Otherwise, Christy, we have a first and a second on the resolution. A first by Mr. Morissette, a second by Odin. We'll start the vote with Mr. Gagne. Yes. Plunkett. Aye. Beerstead. Aye. Morissette. Aye. Downing. Aye. Odin. Aye. Watson. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Okay, that's it for tonight. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. <laughs> Christy, we have first and second to adjourn. We start the vote with Mr. Morissette. Watson. Plunkett. Aye. Gagne. Odin. Aye. You're said. Aye. Doning. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Okay, that's it. We're done. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for all the hard work, guys. Appreciate staff for everything you guys are doing. Yep. yep. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, well Council. Done. Well done. Everybody stay warm. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.